Hello, dear ones. Father Peter John coming to you from All Saints Orthodox Church, South Bloomington, Indiana. Christ is in our midst. So today I want to conclude uh, the series that I've been working on with the uh, stylites. And I want to conclude by talking about a stylite who is most spectacular, um, but his story is a little bit unusual. And I know there are some of you who are going to hear it. Some will say, what is that even possible? And then others are going to say, oh, that poor boy, etc. I don't know. All I know is I don't write the stories, but I'm going to do my best to tell it. It's the story of St. Simeon, the younger stylite. Now, we remember the first stylite uh, in recorded history was Simeon, the elder. Um, and this is, then, Simeon the Younger. Now, when we say younger, um, it's not just because he was younger. I'm going to tell you about St. Simeon the Younger. But first, let me tell you about his parents. He was born to very pious parents, Martha and John. Martha is a saint in the Orthodox Church. Um, and Martha wanted to be, from her very youngest days, she really desired to be a monastic, a nun. That's what she wanted. But... Um, her parents really wanted her to marry, and uh, they had this pious John in mind, you know, and um, so she went and she prayed in the church, and she felt like the Lord told her to be obedient to her parents and to go and, um, and really work out her salvation in marriage, and so that's what she did, and she prayed for a baby. She, she desired to have a child, and she told the Lord that if she had a child, that she would dedicate him to the service of, of the Lord, and so... Um, what happened, and this story is full, uh, you, you can read the whole story and, and kind of get all the details on it, but this story is full of saints and the Lord himself appearing in this family. Uh, St. John the Baptist appeared to Martha and told her that she would conceive a son and that, um, that he would be dedicated to God, that he would be a very special light within the Christian world. And so, anyway, Martha gives birth to this child, Simeon, and, um, and they raise him in the church. And he is a very special, very devout little boy, loved to be in church. And in fact, when he was six years old, he was in church, and uh, there was a great earthquake in Antioch, where he was living there in the 6th century. And um, when the earthquake happened, his father died. And um, there, the, the story is a little bit hazy, but it sounds like he was in church. Maybe he was in church with his father. I'm not sure. But somehow John got separated from family. So he's six years old. And so he's wandering around looking for his mother. Can't find her. And uh, a kind woman takes him in for about a week. And there's, a, of course, all the confusion following the earthquake. Apparently it was a, a pretty big deal. And uh, so anyway, his mother is praying, and eventually she uh, again receives a visit from St. John the Baptist, who tells her um, where to find the boy. Well, it wasn't long after that that um, she brought him to a monastery, and he was... Um, he, he, he absolutely loved being there. It, for him, it was like what he was made for. And he knew it just from at the age of six, you know, he knew he was made to be a monk and he loved his life in the monastery. And his mother, I believe, went and lived uh, in a monastery at that point as well, a different one. Well, his spiritual father, uh, Abba John, was a, a stylite in the monastery and so when uh, Simeon saw that his spiritual father was a stylite, he asked him if he could be a stylite too. And uh, about a, maybe a year or so after he'd been there, they saw his devotion and they saw his prayerfulness. And so he received the blessing to become a stylite at the age of seven. Talk about Simeon the Younger. Seven years old. And so the monks come and they build him a big a, 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 a stylite. They build him a, a column. Thank you. And um, he, so they build him a column. Now, I'm just guessing it wasn't very big, but um, because who puts a seven-year-old on top of a big tower, right? But they built him a column, and he gets up there. Well, he's fasting and praying, and, and he becomes very, very holy. I mean, he was already a holy kid, but now it's just like the brethren are just like, oh, my goodness. So by, like, the age of nine, he's surpassed his abbot, his spiritual father, in holiness. Like, he's just receiving these gifts of healing, um, where people just start coming. And it says that they're coming not only for healing, but they're also coming to hear his wise counsel. A nine-year-old. His wise counsel. 
Well, when he's 11, he asks his uh, abbot if he can please have a bigger pillar. So they build him a 40-foot pillar. And he ascends the 40-foot pillar. Actually, that's not the way the story goes. Excuse me, let me correct myself. The bishops come... And they tell him before he can ascend this pillar, they're going to ordain him a deacon. An 11-year-old deacon, right? So they ordain him a deacon, and then it says his spiritual father places him atop the 40-foot pillar. So it's very much this sense that he's not doing it on his own. It's, he's not leading himself. Like, he really is in this relationship of obedience and submission, which is a very important part of any um, spiritual life. So he's up on this pillar and he's healing people and he's praying for people and he's giving wise counsel. And then when he's, he, when he's a, um, a teen, his spiritual father dies. And so he just keeps this simple rule. You know, he wants to be obedient. His spiritual father dies. So he's obedient to this rule that he reads the scriptures and holy books and copies, right? All day long. That's what he's doing. And then when the sun goes down, he, stay, he stands up and he prays all night. Then he takes a short rest before the sun comes up, and then he begins the day again. Uh, so anyway, at the age then of 19, he has a vision of Jesus standing on top of a pillar uh, on this place called the Wonderful Mountain. It's an actual place. And so he goes and he finds, you know, finds the place where he saw Jesus standing on this pillar. And he goes out there and he erects a pillar. First, he's just, he, he doesn't, it's not a very sophisticated place. Everything's real simple, kind of wilderness. He goes and he just finds a rock and he's on top of the rock. Well, then all of these monks begin coming, right? So they want to live around him. So he builds a monastery there. Now, keep in mind again, he's 19. And we are told that he had great wise counsel for all of these monastics. This 19-year-old leading all of these grown men in their spiritual life. Quite an incredible story. Uh, so he's there on this little rock for a little while, and then he has a bigger pillar, uh, and he <clears throat> goes through, uh, again, leading this monastery, and all of these monks coming, and he continues to heal people. Well, then he prays this very special prayer. He prays that the Holy Spirit will come upon him with power. And so, as he is praying, there is, as witnessed by these others, there is this incredible flash of light. And um, he receives the Holy Spirit in a way that, of course, you know, he received the Holy Spirit at baptism. The Holy Spirit was there when he was ordained a deacon. But here he is now, and he's asking for this gift of grace, a special gift, which he received. And um, just, again, from the story, it sounds like he, he began writing and, um, and, and speaking and just doing all of these things that he hadn't done before after this gift of grace. Uh, he lived on top of this pillar uh, until he was 75 years old. Uh, I neglected also to mention that um, somewhere in there as he's on the, on the uh, wonderful mountain that he's ordained a priest, and so he makes it to his 75th year. The Lord tells him it is time for him to depart in peace. He calls the brethren together, gives them final instructions, uh, basically gives them a final blessing, and he departs this life in peace. That's St. Simeon the Younger. Uh, he's called of the wonderful mountain. So may he pray for us that we may receive grace, that we may receive wisdom, and uh, that we may grow in our relationship with Christ in the way that he enjoyed his relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ is in our midst. He is and ever shall be.